We have a very intense hour of television. Some graphic language was used. It's raw, it's real, and it starts right now. That is not going to happen. On the finale of the House of Judgment. I mean, her face looked like the devil or something. I don't need that. Guests face off with Dr. Phil. I tell him he was wrong. You're kind of paranoid about that. Yeah. You're so self-centered, you don't pay attention to anybody else. I refuse to let you say that about me on TV. If you will give up this behavior, your life will go a whole lot better. And is one tenant about to take a hike? Yikes. Are you going to defend this? This is Dr. Phil. He is trying to help you. You know better. Coming up. Let's do it. I want you to get excited about your life. Here we go. In 10. Stand by, camera 6. If it's happening now, we're going to deal with it now. Stand by, Dr. Phil. This is going to be a changing day in your life. I'm taking people with real problems and moving them into the Dr. Phil house. I'm going to put you under a microscope. Need a camera here, need one here. I'm putting cameras everywhere to see what really happens behind closed doors. I am moving in with you. Previously, you watched some of, in my opinion, the most judgmental people I have ever met appear on my stage and then move into the Dr. Phil house. Now, from the moment they walked through the door, their combative viewpoints had them facing off. Here's what's happened so far. Today, we're talking to people with some distorted and extreme points of view. Let's talk to Joe Cool or Dick. A woman has no responsibilities because I don't expect her to get anything right. It is my job and my call of duty to tell sinners how to live their life lying still and you're going to hell. You may be the most judgmental person I've ever met. I despise society. I despise people. I despise consumerism. It pisses me the f off. So who peed your Cheerios? I have wished that I was white because I'm ashamed of the black people. I married a white guy because he treats me like a queen. You're a racist against your own race. Yes. When people call me a bitch, I say that's Miss Bitch to you. I will judge anybody for their appearance, whether they're skanky, snabby, ugly, skinny, overweight. You're proud of being a bitch. Yes. Can I have you come up here, please? I think we're just going to move all these people into the Dr. Phil house because I think they deserve each other. think anybody in that group seemed like they were on my side. We are definitely on a long road. You are the most angry, judgmental people I have ever had the misfortune of meeting. I'm going to give you a chance to tell everybody in the house why your judgments are right. What the numbers show is that women can't raise kids. You will go to hell for what you do if you don't ask God to save you. It's not okay to be gay. It's not okay to smoke. Realize that we're not the same, so get the hell away from me and I'll get the hell away from you. I wish these lazy-ass black girls would get their asses off welfare. I am banned from five bars around my area due to fighting. If a girl will look at me, I will say, what the f*** are you looking at, bitch? I just found out the Bible thumper who thinks everyone who drinks is going to hell is a spokesmodel for alcohol. You think it'll send people to hell? But I don't drink it, so I'm not going to hell. Kim is a big time hypocrite. This is all about get them before they get me. Judgmental people, that's the game you play. You've said things that I know you don't mean. If I had an unattractive child that had nappy hair, I would definitely give that child away. <gasps> I just can't believe that she said something like that. Did you say you were kind of happy that your ex-boyfriend that cheated on you had a retarded baby? I believe that what goes around comes around. That's really bad. Whatever. I mean, he doesn't even know who he is. You have absolutely no motivation to change because you're trying to sell tickets. You say you're just like 24-7 bitch. You're like a bully on the playground. Your playground is just the rest of the world now. I'm pretty confused. Maybe I'm a lunatic. You're not a lunatic. You will find your way out of this maze. I want you on a plane back. We live in the real world, not Dr. Phil world. This makes me want to go crazy. You are going to be stuck together sailing this boat. Kimberly gets all mad. She's like, I'm not going on the boat. Y'all don't like me, so why do you care if I don't get on the boat? Good God, God. grow up. They didn't even treat O.J. Simpson like this, and he killed his wife. Come here, go Fear of me drowning. That's my greatest fear. Let's go. Come on, this is like so hard for me right now. She's coming. I had to drag Aaron. If I had to throw her over my shoulders, I would have did it. Oh. 
Honestly, I was surprised that Erin got on that boat. I was proud of her. Hopefully my daughters will see mommy on that boat. And she will say her mom is not a failure. What a piece of Her boyfriend made the kid lie. He didn't really fall down the stairs. Would you lie to me and tell me my son fell on the stairs? Crystal is completely dominated by her boyfriend. I gotta go. I can't stay here no more. You're not getting to work on any of your feelings. You got three days. Can you give it three days? Erin? I'm Judge Lynn. You're the judge that's on TV. Yeah. I knew exactly who she was, and it was mind-blowing. You spend so much time judging other black people because you want to say, it's not me. It's not me. I don't have to say it's not me. I know it's not me. She's been pretty judgmental about a lot of stuff, right? Oh, yes. My wife, Erin, is a snob. She's uppity. You're a racist. You will absolutely cripple your children if you poison their minds with that kind of prejudice. During Crystal's stay at the Dr. Phil house, her boyfriend has been relentless about calling her. And as a result, she became suspicious he was going to show up unannounced at the house. You have reached my boyfriend never shuts his phone off. They think they're flying him out here. My boyfriend didn't want me to even do this in the first place. I mean, he tried talking me out of it a lot of times. I finally got a hold of my wife. Did you get a hold of... No. My boyfriend does not ever shut his phone off. The only thing that I can think of is, what if they flew him out here? What if he's on a plane? So would that be a bad thing? If... Yeah, it would. What time does Dave get off work? Do you know? Is he on his way here? Come on, you can you can just tell me. I mean, I, I I haven't been able to get a hold of him all day. Okay, that's all you got to say. I'm out of here. I was very surprised the way Crystal reacted. Listen, I'm going. I'm going. I'm not staying. Nobody's listen. gonna change my. Nobody. Hey, look. Me. Listen. You're upset right now. It is. It's just all f***ed up. I want to go. When Crystal came to the house, we could all clearly see that she was in no shape to make a change. I want you on a plane back. Everybody here can hear what you're saying, please, really. Your kids are more important than the show. He does not do nothing but make things worse for me. You're he here. is a part of you though, right? Her boyfriend was the cause of all her anger, all her drama, all her confusion. Would you lie to me and tell me my son fell on the I hate you. I cannot believe that you even did that to me. He was the biggest problem in her life. I wanted to do this on my own. Without him, I mean, I can't even get away from him to come get help for myself because he's always got to be involved with everything in my life. Yesterday, she was saying how oh, she loved him. And today, she was saying how she's going to leave him. And she's not ready. You know that's not right. What? Can we come in? No, you guys, seriously, nothing anybody says is going to make me say. Coming up. Can Dick and Jason convince Crystal to stay and confront her boyfriend? I wanted to do this on my own for myself. I don't need him. And later. You're so self-absorbed and self-centered that you don't pay attention to anybody else's feelings. I just feel like I'm just being dashed like over the head with a hammer. Do you not want me to speak to you? We now return to the Dr. Phil house. You know that's not right. What? Can we come in? No, you guys, seriously, nothing anybody says is going to make me say. Coming in anyway. Well, I know you don't matter, no, Just no. listen, just listen. Yeah. We're, we're guys, you got to listen, because we made sense last night, okay? I honestly didn't think Crystal would freak out like she is. I think maybe she's looking for an excuse to leave. Yeah, but you guys, I don't care. I know, but, I but, but, do but, this on my own, because he always has control of my life. Crystal has put herself in relationships that are dangerous to her. He doesn't, he's not going to have control. Not only are we on your side, but sorry, he's got Dr. Guys. Phil. I wanted to do this on my own for myself. I don't need him. If you don't need him, then why are you going back to him? I don't want to see him here. She's going to break up with him. And within the matter of 45 minutes, she's leaving now to go back to her boyfriend. The house is not even helping me. It's making me go crazy. Crystal was on the threshold of a breakthrough. Crystal had the support of Dr. Phil himself. She had the reason to get help in the form of her children. And Crystal chose to abandon it at the last minute because of her emotions. That's too bad. 
she was saying, she, she like contradicts herself. I can't do this by myself. Lot of, now she's gonna do it all by herself. Did they not hear the part when you said you create like your you own? You create your own reality. Yeah, and oh. they were responsible for, for your, your own, own creation. Yeah, you you did this to yourself. I think you're making a mistake for yourself. For yourself, though. I just want to say goodbye to the people that I met. Give me a moment. I gotta go. It was very, it was a pleasure, pleasure meeting you guys. I think that Crystal made a mistake to leave because after I calmed down and Kim calmed down, it was like everything was back to normal in the house. Are you guys staying? I mean, obviously we're here. We wasted so much time. And nothing got solved. No, I don't think it did either. Crystal was like really not. She I don't is, think she wanted to stay at all. I think she but just she needs used help. It. She has so much rage. She's like a time bomb, though. Like she just keeps going. I want her to get help. I feel that Crystal is kind of a follower. Crystal left the house because of her boyfriend. He owns her. Her relationship, whatever, is not going good with her boyfriend. Like she keeps saying, I don't love him, but I want to go home to see my boyfriend and my kids. When we went in there to talk to her, she was like, well, I'm going to leave him and I'm going to go home and I want to tell him this and that. If you go home now, nothing will change. If you're going home, yeah, something is going to change. He's going to be out of my life. Well, if you're going to leave him and he's here and they're going to bring him on the show so that, like you have some sort of like protection of some sort, why don't you just do it here? Crystal was all this bad, eh, but she is so weak. She said, you're weak, you act like an effing kid. Who's really the kid? There you go. Actually, speak loud in words. You can show them better than you can tell them. Well, I'm still here. I did not expect that. Me and either. It was, this just proves my point that the dumbest, simplest things can make you lose sight of everything. I'm still saying focus on what I'm here for. The way people are acting is actually, it's helping me see how being just outrageous is actually pretty harmful. I'm so, like, honestly, I really didn't mean to come off so mean Everybody this morning. Everybody was, like, cursing at no, me. No, 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 no. I've been, I like, the coolest this whole trip. I know, and I was pissed off, but... Even you just saying, like, some of the things you said today, you've, like, came a long way already. And I know you can still stay mad at me or whatever. I, and... I'm not mad. Jason came up to me. He's, like, at the table. Yeah, Kimberly, you know, you really did have a good point there. That made me mad. Earlier, just because everyone was bashing me, all of a sudden he started bashing me. You realize I'm, I'm, I want to start over with you, like, so you know that okay. I'm not coming against you? Okay. I would slap you with this steak, Jason, first of all. Excuse my Christianity, but sometimes we do get a little tempted. I like to be on here with, with intelligent enough people that were super opinionated, but they could still accomplish something. That, like, took it to a whole nother level for me. Like, I Jane, never would have guessed me neither. that would have happened. Me neither. Crystal has been a super just up and down and super judgmental and freaking out and it's kind of made me realize that that's not going to get anybody anywhere it's not going to get me anywhere i hope that we don't lose more people and have to end it all i hope we can still make it all the way through because i'd really be sad to not get everything out coming up what happens when kim goes head to head with dr phil and her sister are you going to defend this you are the one that asked to be on this show no, stay here, wait. Kim, I have come a back. Great life. I just been here. I refuse to let you say that about me on TV. With Crystal's somewhat unexpected departure, I felt it was important for me to meet with the house guests to make sure they remain focused on why they came to the Dr. Phil house in the first place. Oh, my God. Hi, Dr. Phil. Dr. <laughs> so what's for lunch? Chicken. Chicken. I was very surprised when Dr. Phil came. He was, like, so cool about it. Oh, my God. Dr. Phil is here. Wow. He just bust <laughs> us out. Like, bam, here I am. You don't want a piece? Yes, I want hey, a piece. Hey, we're matching. We look good together. Look That's at that. all right. Hey, we're styling. I think I'm in love with Dr. Phil. <laughs> it was just great to turn around and see him walking in. So the group shrunk some, huh? It did. I've been doing this for six years, and I said from day one, minute one, I ain't for everybody. Crystal came in with the intention of controlling the experiment and controlling Dr. Phil. She wanted help on her terms. She wasn't going to take help any other way. So really, she didn't want help. I hate that she will miss a great opportunity to learn and grow and be here with you guys and continue the process, but... You know, you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences. Let me tell you what I believe. What happens in this house is a microcosm 
of life. And trust me, the way you behave here is a direct mirror to how you behave out there. I definitely agree with that. Even though I may not deal with certain people here as well as I could, it's still going to help me with people, you know, out in society. Hey, just my opinion, but I think that since Kim arrived at the house, she has been self-righteous and combative. So I thought it was time to sit her down and make her see how her behavior was so self-defeating. I feel like I'm being singled out. Everybody's always... You Kim, Kim, okay, let me just let you say what you have to say. It might be something good. You're kind of paranoid about that, aren't you? Yeah. Like, I feel like this whole show has been about what Kim is doing wrong. I'm just like, just shut up, man. You've heard me talk about the others, right? Right. I mean, what do you, what do you want that, that isn't happening? <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> when my sister walked out, I was so happy. I was, like, surprised and happy. Hi. It was just exciting that she was actually happy to see me. <laughs> Usually if I see my sister, the greeting isn't the same. The true test of whether this was worthwhile or not is not what happens here. It's what she does in the world when she leaves here. And I have told her that she is judgmental, hypocritical, self-righteous, and that that gets in her way because she has so much to offer. And she says, no, 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 I am not that way at all, and you know better. So what is the truth? She's fun, she can be a really sweet girl. But yeah, she's been very paranoid. You always think you're right. When I try to tell you something about you, you always tell, tell me something about me. You think like someone's out to get you. Like you guys are making me feel like a horrible person. Like I'm just this B-I-T-C-H and walking around with the Bible, slapping people upside the head with it. You can say to your sister, well, she's closed-minded and sees you a certain way, so that's just the way it is. Well, you came here with a bunch of strangers. They all characterized you the same way. You sat before a professional. I looked you in the eye and characterized you exactly the same way. At some point, you've got to stop being so hard-headed and say, it's not that the whole world's crazy. They were, like, a little bit too hard on me. Both of them together, like, just bashing me. She's had so many cool friends, like, from growing up. All these people are not in her life anymore. And I'm thinking, like, why? When we see Kimberly come in, we kind of take a deep breath, and we have to stomach her. And we know pretty much she's going to get an attitude, or it's not going to be fun to be around her. If you will give up some of this judgmental behavior, your life will go a whole lot better. You say, I don't care if my friends leave me because I believe what I believe. Well, you should care if your friends leave you because they're decent and good people. The fact that you don't just means that you're so self-absorbed and self-centered that you don't pay attention to anybody else's feelings. They lied and said, I don't have any friends. So I lost some friends, but I have friends. Are you going to defend this? Do you care about the truth? We're not even like close. Because the things you say and you, you're always angry is always something that I do wrong. It's okay to be wrong, but you make us feel like crap. You are the one that has to be on this show. You want to help. No, I came on the show to speak about my Christianity. Do you not want me to speak to you? I just feel like I'm just being bashed like over the head with a hammer. Because anytime I, somebody... I I let them talk. Stop, stop. Um, anytime somebody disagrees with you, then you become the victim. It's great for you to give everybody your opinion, tell everybody what you think, judge everybody else, but if somebody turns the tables on you, then all of a sudden, well, I'm just being picked on. I'm just a victim. I'm being singled out. I'm going to hell. God, please forgive me. But now you're being sarcastic. You are no, being I'm sarcastic and disrespectful to the entire process. She came down here to try and be a positive factor in this. This is Dr. Phil. I mean, he is trying to help you. Does it matter to you at all that you're getting all this feedback that's being offered to you in a, a loving and hopeful way. I don't think it's like too loving. You don't think your sister's here in love? I mean, yeah, I know she loves me, but... You came here because you were harsh, you were outspoken, and you were judgmental. And then when you got here, you lived up to every billing. And it's getting in your way. All I'm telling you is I just want you to be happier in your life. Okay. No, stay here, wait. No, I mean... You no, let me let me tell you why, Kim, before you... Kim, I come back. Great, I just been here. I have a great condo, great job. Okay, but come here. 
I have I'm my tell sanity. You I'm faithful in God. Great okay. parents. Not an overall, not. like, miserable, crazy, no. deranged. Okay, come back. Let me tell you Being what people upside the head person. I, don't, I, I refuse to let you say that about me on TV. She has a great life. She has things going for her. But she doesn't have anyone to share it with, like uh, her sisters, for instance. I'm going to give you guys a chance to go sit down and talk together. Okay. The two of you. And hopefully not be defensive the whole time. Coming up, Kim and her sister face off. I just thought it was real nice that you're getting Dr. Phil to help you. I'm not crazy. I am not mentally disturbed. I know exactly what I'm doing. And the house guests are put to a final test. <laughs> we now return to the Dr. Phil house. This is a setup, though. It's focus, man. Just they, listen. They, just listen. They, really, they, they gonna but really Kim, me off and bring Carice out there to talk bad about me. I'm not here to talk bad about well, you. Well, this is on national Because you're my sister. Now you're here. You might as well try to get something out of it. That's all I'm saying. Dr. Phil fronted me off. And you said he's a doctor. Yeah. That doesn't mean he's right. I tell him he's wrong. I didn't say he was right. I just thought it was real nice that you're getting somebody like Dr. Phil to help you. Help me. I don't feel that she's absorbing what she needs to absorb, she'll still have an excuse and a rebuttal right away. Everybody like has betrayed me. I can't trust nobody. I'm, I'm here right I'm, now. I keep, I keep it real. real. You know that. But I'm I keeping it real, real right now. But I will tell somebody today, Faith, you fake, I walk away. Now, you see how you just did all of that? Why can't people do the same thing to you? They can. People that care about her do not tell her the things that we say to her because we're attacking her, but because we love her and we want to help her. Stop being so defensive. <laughs> Look pissed off. You rolling your well, eyes. Anytime somebody like badgering you, naturally you're going to defend yourself. No, okay, not the way you do it. I feel that just because someone gets defensive doesn't mean that they're like some bad person. I think that's a, that's a good thing. When I try to help you, it's like you push me away. Y'all make it seem no, like... No, I'm not talking Kim, about you that. you need not bipolar like you know. medicine. But am I, but Kim, you keep saying you all make it seem... Am I ever saying that you deranged? Am I ever saying that... I've never said that. I'm not crazy, first of all. Okay, I am not mentally disturbed. I know exactly what I'm doing. I was upset because, like, I felt like she was, like, bashing me. I don't know why the heck my sister is sitting on TV lying about stuff. Y'all don't like me, and I don't know why. Kim, that is not... If I didn't like you, I would not be here. I would not flown my butt on a plane. You just wanted to free trip to LA. No, I did not. Why are all the people that picked Carice? They flew her out because she don't really have a job right now. That's... that's. I mean, I'm not hating on her, but she don't really work, like, full-time. I think bad, it's really bad when me and you can't even hang out. But I have you friends. Y'all make it seem like I'm, but like, you, this secluded, under you only rock. have one big sister. I understand. The that. only one, and we don't do anything together, and that has hurt me. I hope that she gets and maybe if I change the way I think then we spend more quality time together. We don't do those things. I'm here because I love you. I'm here because I want like, a relationship show, with you. Not, I can get a little bit more credit than what I'm getting on this show. And I'm not going to change just because they flew my sister out here. I think my sister's like pushing issues out on me that she really has. It seems to me that Kim is refusing to hear how her judgmental behavior is holding her back in all parts of her life. But that doesn't mean that I haven't seen progress in the other house guests. So I thought it was time for them to take what they've learned here at the Dr. Phil house into the outside world and see how their prejudices stood the test. We went to the L.A. mission. Dick and I were really excited, I think, to walk in, but Kim and Aaron were freaking out a little. I'm not getting out. I didn't want to be there. Where are we going? I should go. I'm not going in there. Erin just was not having it. I didn't think she was going to come in at all. How you doing? How you doing? Hey, welcome to the L.A. Mission. Thanks. God. Hello, ladies. How are you? Welcome to the L.A. Mission. Give me some aprons, David. Yes. When we got there, we met David, who walked us through what we were going to be doing. There you go. Are they new? Yes, they are new. The apron, the hat, and the gloves. I was like, I don't need that. It's not going to hurt. She was a challenge. She didn't want to have nothing to do with this. It's just like you being a mother, helping your children. Some people need help. At the end of the day, after you see the people come in and you realize, I helped them, it'll give you a better feeling inside. When he said that, it's like, oh, yeah, I can do that. So I immediately clicked out of it, got out of myself, and started helping. You can just take your knife, and just scrape them away. All right. I got to slice some onions, which I got through without crying, which is pretty manly. I think you'll agree. Now we're going to go get the other young lady, wherever she's trying to hide out at. Find the nearest church. 
Well, Kimberly, how about if I just let you cut a few onions? It's gonna be all right. You gonna make it? No, everybody can hate me on this show. My, even my sister came on the show to talk bad about me. Kim was once again being her normal bitchy self. But when David was telling Jason and myself about his relationship with God. Kim chimed in attacking us, and he explained to her that this is exactly why people have problems with Bible thumpers. You believe in God, right? Yes, we serve an awesome God to keep us in yes, peace and harmony, right? God. Wait, wait, listen, listen, listen. You got to listen to her. She was just radical when she came in. I was like, oh, this is going to be a challenge. We do pray at this time. Would you like to join us in our circle? You know, I don't want to insult the prayer by having a non-believer be a part of it. That's fine. I have but no problem If you don't mind me observing, then yeah. Sure, come on. At this time, uh, we Everybody do pray. Everybody must pray. Everybody must pray. Stop, 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 stop. Stop, 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 stop. Dave invited us out to the prayer, and we, even though it's not my thing, it, you know, we were, I was in his environment, so I just kind of hung out, tried to be respectful. Anybody have a prayer request just to say thank you? First, I want to give honor to God, who's ahead of my life. I thank God for letting me get stronger in my faith. People were actually praying, and they actually, like, believed what I believed, and I didn't actually feel like a leper or outcast. I said, all right! All right, I got a special job just for you. I'm going to let you hand them the plate. Would you do that for me? Serving food was great. Jason was putting fish sticks on. Kim was putting the potatoes on. And I was uh, handing them out to Aaron, who was presenting them to the diners. It wasn't something I have done ever before, being inside a homeless shelter and interacting with the people and actually serving them and I felt good doing it. They thought it was really gonna be a challenge to get her to serve the food. But she went out there willingly. Too hard. I felt like I actually like had a meaningful experience tonight. It wasn't so much about the helping, it was so much that I, I was actually around people who like understood me. At the end I was talking to one of the homeless people. I wanted to thank him for giving me the opportunity to um, serve him this mm -hmm. evening. And then he said back that, thank you for serving him and um, God bless me. It just really touched me. I mean, what is what gets better than that? We thank y'all for coming, participating. I hope you feel something in your heart about helping. And you be nicer. Be nicer. I was going to bitch at Kimberly the whole way home just to, just to be a jackass back to her. But I thought, really, is it really worth it now? It puts things in perspective for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, be good. Coming up, the house guests face Dr. Phil one last time. Everything I say about women has come true in this house. The day will come that you will wish you hadn't said a lot of the things that you've said. We now return to the Dr. Phil house. I'm assuming that all of us want to leave a legacy of people looking back and say, you know, I'm glad that that person was in my life. What would you do different that would have a bigger impact on the world? Being less argumentative and less defensive. The thing that I learned from Dr. Phil is that you can live your life not by being so vocal about it, but some things you can do by your actions. What would you do different? I would stop being so judgmental and stop acting like such a snobby bitch. I'd really have a different outlook on the views that I enter the house with. I feel that I will be happier because I know what I need to do now. How about you? I think I'm having a better impact in the world right now. You're not saying that you're perfect. Absolutely not. So what could you no. do better? I think the best thing we can do is focus on our goals which I'm doing. My philosophy before I came into the Dr. Phil house is that men are better than women. Now I couldn't agree with myself more just because what I say sounds harsh doesn't mean necessarily that actions based on it are. As I predicted, you really don't have a change that you intend to make. This is pretty much a marketing thing for you. I can't say that it's not a marketing thing, but I did come into this with an open attitude and everything I say about women 
has come true in this house. When Dr. Phil challenged my motives for being here, that left an impression with me because it appeared to me like he didn't respect my reasons for being here. And a man like Dr. Phil, it's important to have their respect. What you're selling is just lumping men into one category, saying men want it vulgar, men want it straight. That's just another generalization. That's just not true. There is a huge amount of men who love it. That means saying some vulgar things in a vulgar way to provide humor. The vulgarity doesn't bother me. It's the ugliness of the message. I don't think my message is hateful because men need to hear things as directly and sometimes as brutally as possible. He loves women. <laughs> I told him he's just waiting for the right one. The title is men are better than women. Not that women are crap. Yeah, and that's just an idiotic statement. It would be idiotic to say it the other way. It would be idiotic to say women are better than men. And you're right. Some woman will get a hold of him and change him and you'll see things a little differently. I know you don't think so, but the day will come that you will wish you hadn't said a lot of the things that you've said. That's entirely possible. One day, maybe I'll look back and say, what a stupid thing to say. If I'm going to be changed into a happier person when I meet a good woman, then I'll be so happy I won't even care about looking foolish. I think fear and confusion really does lead to get them before they get me, and I think you are absolutely walking talking poster boy forget them before they get me what do you think you can do that will improve your impact in this world what i'm going to do when i leave is really actually be as open as i thought that i really was when i came to the house i would characterize myself as pretty hard-headed and stubborn i thought i was open-minded and i've learned i wasn't open-minded at all one of the biggest problems we have in this world today is that we just don't all get along. We have killers among us that are out there shooting and murdering innocent people. One thing they all have in common, they've all been excluded. They feel powerless, they feel helpless, they feel hopeless, and so they do something drastic and dramatic to get even. I just wonder what would happen if somewhere along the way, instead of making fun of this kid, the cool kid, in the school had gone over and said, hey, why don't you come sit with us, man? So I wonder if that one single act might have kept that person from taking a gun and shooting people. When Dr. Phil was talking about school shootings, that really impacted me because in high school, I was the outcast. And though I didn't go out and shoot up a school or anything, that really got me thinking a lot more about what I want to do when I leave here. I wonder what would happen if we were confident enough about who we were that we didn't have to belong to a clique, that we didn't have to judge other people so you have somebody to look down on. I think that's the problem with all judgment. And at this point, I would hope you would consider my philosophy that if you just went out there and said, I want to bring into this world a spirit of acceptance, not a spirit of better than, less than, right, wrong, and try to find something that you can accept about everybody. I feel like I have a lot more work to do because these are strong beliefs that I had and lived by. But when I do return home, I will be exercising these changes. There are a lot of misconceptions about chauvinism. Being a chauvinist does not make you a bad person if you don't use your beliefs to act in a bad way. I never in a million years would have thought that I would have been in a situation where I would have even regarded some of these people because I just decided a long time ago to keep them just totally away. Now I've learned I'm going to try really hard not to separate myself. Coming up, the house guests prepare to go home. I think that you should find out who you are so that you don't have to hide behind God. She doesn't care. And how does Jason fare in the real world? We now return to the Dr. Phil house. It was a great experience. Uh, not every chauvinist gets to square off with Dr. Phil. I'm thrilled that I came because it was an experience that I really needed badly. I don't really have to say I'm not doing that, but I came here and actually tried from day one. So I'll be happy when I get home. I'm just, I wanna go home. I really feel mentally and physically drained. I mean, I was coming with an open mind, but I didn't know that like, everything was like gonna be like totally against me. Kimberly is the one that has changed the least out of all of us. She's a fake. 
She doesn't intend to change at all. Good luck when you get home. And I miss my students. Miss Kim is back. I'm like the coolest gym teacher. Even though I don't like her. If she wouldn't have been here, I don't think I would have been able to learn as much as I did. Because her not learning anything helped me progress so much faster. Wait, I have one thing I want to say before you leave. Are you going to listen or do you want me to see you? I think that you should find out who you are so that you don't have to hide behind God. So that things actually matter what you do. So you have to take some sort of accountability instead of just giving yourself to God and saying he's going to save you. She doesn't care. I want to go home. This is not a place for me at all. First thing I'm going to do when I get out of here is take the kids to the park. The turning point for me, I would have to say, when you brought Mrs. B on here, Judge Lynn. I'm very thankful to those women for taking time out for me to making me realize what I was doing and how I was thinking was just totally wrong. It was great seeing Aaron change. I'm going to take that with me. I've always thought it was possible for people to change, but the effort that it takes them to change is, is incredible. I worked my ass off while I was here to make sure that I got something out of it, and I did. I'm taking away a lot more self-confidence, a lot more respect for other people, a way more open mind, and probably a lot more humility than I had before. I'm, I'm thinking about reaching out to the, the kids that are kind of weird and misunderstood and, you know, just really, you know, outcast reaching out to them and actually trying to help them. As I walk out the door of the Dr. Phil house, I take a bit of a new mission with me. I want to straighten out some of the prejudices that I think are out there towards chauvinism. I'm going home to get married. As I leave for today, my faith has not changed at all. I'm upset now, but when I get off the plane, I'll be Kim again. My approach to people has changed in the house, but I'm not going to change my belief. Like, I still believe you're going to hell for things you do. When I walk out the door today, I will be taken home with me. Memories of being in this house, my experiences, a new aspect on life. As a result of Jason's stay at the Dr. Phil house, he made some sweeping changes in his life when he arrived home. Our cameras caught up with him in the weeks that followed. It's been about two weeks since I left the Dr. Phil House of Judgment. Being at the Dr. Phil House at first, it was kind of confusing and nerve-wracking and a little bit scary. We didn't really know what was going on. Really fast, just everything turned upside down. Dr. Phil really honed in on me really fast. He asked us what would happen if maybe some of the misfit kids in the world in high schools had somebody to look up to, had somebody to talk to, if maybe they wouldn't go shoot up schools or turn into criminals later on. I happened to be one of those kids in high school. I didn't want to pick up a gun and kill people, but I was an outcast because I was different. The misfit kids, they'll seek me out and I just got this overwhelming feeling that maybe that's what I need to be doing because I do have an influence on kids. That was my turning point. My wife and I own a retail store. We sell murder-related items from inmates, mass murderers. Being in the Dr. Phil house made me realize that it's a little more immoral than I had in my mind. We're actually going to close it. We're going to try to do something more positive. I wanted to talk to misfit kids in the schools, and that is something I never realized before until the house. And now I just, I know it. I was doing it in a way through my store with, with all these kids that would come in and talk to me hour after hour after hour. and They just needed somebody to talk to and somebody that understood them. And in a way, I was doing it without really realizing I was doing it. The Boys and Girls Club, I figured, would be a good place to start. I come to fill out my um, volunteer packet. They let me take youth out once a week, Absolutely. you know, plan some activities, yeah, talk to them. I haven't changed my opinions. I'm still strong in my beliefs. I've just changed my approach, trying to be a little more open-minded to new people and being way less judgmental. Stay tuned for more of the Dr. Phil House. For more exclusive footage from the house, go to drphil.com. Thanks so much. So long. When I first met everybody, I had so many different judgments for all of them. Now it's a soft spot in my heart for each and every one of them. There are women that do great things every day. Erin's done a great thing today. She's done a great thing for her kids, a great thing for her family, and most importantly for herself. I'm definitely proud of Erin. I don't know who wouldn't be. Dick is just one of the sweetest guys. He wants to say that he still feels the same as when he first got here, but 
I can see that he's changed. I think Dick is afraid to admit that he um, has a kind heart. Now, over the last few days, um, I've learned that I, I really can do the things that I want to do and accomplish, and I really do have power to um, not drag myself down. I can lift myself up. Every day I live, my faith gets stronger. It's not like no special incident or anything like that. It just gets stronger every day. Jason has been coming to terms with the fact that he's been burning a lot of energy, uh, being angry at belief in general, and it's not necessary. Dr. Phil says stuff in kind of broad, you know, like what ifs, and it is almost like he's just holding up a mirror, you know, like I identify with everything that he says, and it just seems to, it just seems to hit me really, really hard, actually. There are a lot of things I agree with uh, Dr. Phil on. You take a woman who's extremely empowered, ex extremely successful, and who seems to have her game together, and you can say easily, I think women can be great. When I came here, like, I didn't really care about anybody, but it was kind of weird in such a short amount of time to actually um, build up, like, relationships with, uh, with people. I will miss um, all the people that were here. Dr. Phil, I'm ready to go home.